next meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business is listed as, I guess we're going to go in order with the budget articles first. Um, and then the minutes will be last. So we have to vote on all of the articles that we have not yet voted on. They are articles three and four, which are the main budget articles. Nine, which is the position classification we got the material of Monday, I think. Ten, which is the capital expenditure, which you have not yet seen, although it's part of your warrant, so you've seen it in your warrant. Uh, Eleven, which is water and sewer. And those, as far as I know, are the only articles that the warrant committee has not yet voted on that they need to vote. So, with that understanding, um, let's start with Article 3. And in your packet, in your folders, uh, all of the motions are there. So if you didn't bring them, you've got them. And in front of the folders is a set of pages of spreadsheets. Everybody please take one. Those are the budget. And that's the detail of the budget. And I'll talk about that at home we do Article 4. So three is so article three. Three is merely transferring transferring funds, funds which we do every year. Correct. Move approval. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. That one's a unanimous vote. Now article four is the budget, and article four is just for the new members. Each item is voted under a general heading. So general government, if you take your your budget, yeah, isn't there another page cover that we have that the summary is on the back of, of uh, your, your big pack of the summary pages Thank for you. the budget are like the last four pages. Thank you. Okay. On the 50. Got it. Page 50 of 52. So general government is all of those things you see above it. The large packet of budget pages, that big packet that you just picked up, Mike. Yeah, it's not It's thick. Yeah. It's got 52 it's pages. In front of the voters. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And page 50 just tells you what what things fall into that category. The thing I would like to ask all subcommittee chairs for each of these, these uh, categories is to be sure that you read the rest of these pages that pertain to your particular budget and know where the differences are. So that if a town meeting member gets up and asks a specific question, you can either answer it or feed fill the answer. And uh, the thing that's, uh, that you want to look for is if there's anything uh, that's markedly increased or decreased from the previous year. Uh, because the town meeting members have sort of the totals from the, they have a spreadsheet usually that shows the totals from the previous year, but they, they don't have all the detail that we have. And so somebody might ask a question like, why did such and such a budget go up by X percent? And so you just want to be able to have the answer. So that's why Barbara has printed out the entire budget for everybody. And what you had in February, you can now discard, transfer all your notes to it, and discard because this is the budget. That was a draft. This is the real budget. So under general government, is there a motion to um, So as uh, chairman of the government, that subcommittee, so I'll move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yes. Just a question. Do the, the percent increases include health insurance increases, or are they a separate item somewhere else? Uh, are you talking about that particular line item? Just in general. The insurance is included within the departments, and it actually has been adjusted for our savings. It's been adjusted in that final column. The percentage will reflect that. Good. Thanks. Okay. As Someone who had these departments, I would point out that almost the entire raise uh, is salary increases. Right. Yeah. That's pretty much true. 
Okay, all in favor? Uh, anyone opposed? Uh, public safety. Is there a motion to recommend approval? So moved. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Uh, Belmont Public Schools, uh, do I have a motion to approve? Motion so moved. Approve. <laughs> and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Minuteman? Can I have a motion to recommend? So moved. Thank you. Second. Uh, any discussion? Yes. Just a comment. I mean, based on the meeting that was on that Saturday, I mean, there has to be a, a way that we can. And I know this is an ongoing issue that somehow <laughs> we can be involved um, in, in more discussions with men and men. And I, I know we have no impact per se on the assessment that just comes down, but the point I made at the meeting and what Dr. Holland seemed to suggest as well is there's very little, if any, um, reach, reach out by Minuteman to us to, as a town to discuss matters and to work with them to try to see if they can reduce their, their cost structure. So that's not for anything for the Warren Committee to do, it's just a comment that, that I made to so have some support. So I don't know what, what work can be done but directed to the board as well. Well, actually, it is for the Warrant Committee, and uh, Peg did report to us, I think you may have been absent at the yeah, meeting, that at the public hearing that Minuteman had, uh, Arlington in particular was extremely disturbed at their increase this year, and the new superintendent of Minuteman said that he wanted to, he understood the problem and that he wanted to work with the finance committees of the 16 towns to uh, bring the budget more in line with uh, what people were seeing in their communities. And so one of the things that Peg Callanan has, has talked about is getting together a group of people as we did eight or nine years ago, where Lexington, Arlington, Belmont, Carlisle, Concord, and Needham got together. And we actually met regularly once a month, once every two weeks. We met with the superintendent and business manager at Minuteman. We met with um, the school committee representatives to the various towns. We met with, we went to every meeting, and uh, we had uh, some influence on the budget at that time. And at that time, the superintendent was very resistant to any ideas of changing things. This superintendent seems to be um, very interested. Uh, so that's one thing that we can do, and Peg is going to be looking at connecting with Arlington and Lexington when our town meetings are over to see when people could start to initiate conversation. Uh, also, um, Dr. Holland has volunteered to work with uh, the towns of Lexington and Belmont. He is a resident of Lexington, and this has always been an area that's interested him tremendously. And so he has uh, volunteered to um, once he is no longer superintendent in Belmont to work with um, people on looking at ways that this can be more in line. Roy, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, well, the, the large increase in Minutemen is, it looks like it's due to, nine, to 2008 being uh, actually atypically low. So it's not clear that Minuteman is really out of line compared to the other schools. Well, if you had... What? Uh, for people, it's like, what is it, what's that? If you had the whole spreadsheet, it's, yeah. it's, it, it, it did go up this year, um, more than people were hoping it would go up. Uh, in Belmont, part of the reason is that we have more students this year than we had the previous year. It actually went down a year ago. Uh, a lot, yeah. Yeah, and so it's gone back up for us, but some towns experienced a huge increase. And there's a, there's a whole lot of things that go into the formula for Minuteman, which are very complicated and very confusing to understand. Um, a lot have to do with the special education students, uh, how many there are or aren't. But there are some areas, of one of the things that Minuteman explains is that they don't have the ability to have Proposition 2.5 overrides for capital expenditures the way that cities and towns do. They actually do, but they would have to get it passed by 16 towns. So they, they do their capital improvements within their operating budget. And that 
sometimes causes some concern on the part of communities who aren't able to do the same thing that Minuteman is able to do. It's also worth noting that Minuteman has the highest per pupil spending of right. any district in the state, right. and in fact, of any vocational technical high school as well. It's the it's by far the highest. There. Two thousand bucks per student ahead of the second place. Yeah. <laughs> I it's, retract it's, my comment. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's way <laughs> up there. <laughs> <laughs> the new superintendent of Minuteman is quite aware of all of this and seems willing to um, work to figure out why he is so far out of line with other of the folk tech schools. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have a motion on the floor. Uh, is there any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? <coughs> Okay, uh, public services. Is there a motion to recommend approval? That's community development, DBW. Is there any discussion? So I have a question. Will, sure. will we be, is the community well aware that the street lights are going out? And, oh, yes. Okay. And if so, are we doing any sort of adopt a light? Uh, Okay. We'll be sitting down after town meeting with uh, Tim and Public Works regarding that. Okay. If we can do that. Yeah. Obviously, it's a billing issue and okay. such. Yeah. Okay. And not included, if I might. Yes. Uh, and not included in this budget is, uh, uh, is the oversight for the no, treasure. No, that's there. not there. Nope. No. And that's only going to go in and it's going to come in out of payment again. Yes, sorry. That's a proof. Right. Right. Yes. 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 right. So um, we can expect a question, we assume, on street lighting since we had one last night. And there may be others. Okay, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Anyone abstaining? Uh, next, culture and recreation. Is there a motion to recommend approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Uh, debt and interest. That's at the bottom of your page. Is there a motion to approve? I, th I think you may have missed human services, did you? I'm sorry, you're right, I yes. did. Um, I'll go to that after I okay. get it because I have a motion on the floor for uh, debt and interest. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion under debt and interest? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Up to Human Services. Thank you for noticing that. Is there a motion? Second. Uh, any any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay, um, <coughs> the capital article we'll do under Article 10, um, and then the transfers is the $150,000. So is there a, for the OPIP, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay, that takes care of Article 4. Now, Article 9 is the one that we held off two meetings ago because we did not have the position classification material. And we have received that, and it is updated for 2009, for FY09. <laughs> it came in the mail, and then it, or email, or however. And then it was also passed out dropped. last night. I think I got dropped. Yeah. Yeah. You got dropped. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, you know what? Here, take my fax copy because I got a uh, easier to read than last night. To get rid of me, huh? <laughs> you got dropped fast. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who stay on for years. <laughs> Don't let him see anything. <laughs> Just know, even if he isn't here, he's watching. <laughs> I had a full email when I got home last week. Um, position classification. Now, is there um, a motion to approve this? We are approving this, right? We are yes. recommending approval. So moved. 
Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there discussion? This is, let me just make sure. sure. This is for FY09, which includes FY08 and FY09. Is that correct? We were, um, trying to, we were going to expand it the last time I was here. We were going to expand it over a two-year period. I thought it was just 09. I believe yeah. it's just 09. So what are we using for FO, FY08? Nothing? Well, it was already... The problem was that we would vote the year that Doesn't only matter. had two months left. We're always a year behind. And so we, just, we voted 07 last April, actually in June. It was even worse. There was like two weeks left. Yes. Uh, and we never did vote 08, but it, once, once the first check goes out, in a sense, it's adopted. Technically, 08 is within 09. Sure. You want to use it in that sense. That's right. well, that was my understanding. Yes. Yeah. yeah, people in okay. 08 got paid what they were going to get. And uh, yeah. examination of the bylaw indicates that we were not required to vote on it every single year, just from time to time. So it's okay, okay so that we didn't vote yeah, it. So right. that was the key last time. Okay. Right. I mean, please. So is there a motion to approve? Not a motion. Uh, there, was a no, there was a motion. Is there all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay, now we're at Article 10, which is the capital budget, and that is listed in your motions, and uh, I will go through the items, if you'd like, and then take a motion to recommend approval or whatever you want to do. Uh, this is for the regular part of the capital budget that the capital budget committee makes recommendations on. There is other money, such as Chapter 90 money or money for water and sewer that the Capital Budget Committee also looks at and makes recommendations on, but that's not included in the $2,174,000. The other money that the Capital Budget Committee, this would this would normally be $150,000 higher uh, in a normal year. This is a normal year, but in a normal year, the Capital Budget Committee would have $150,000 more to spend on equipment. However, because of a vote that was taken a year ago to do borrowing for 10 years on the Belmont High School HVAC units, that $150,000 is taken out of the capital budget and put to debt uh, and will be done so for the life of the bond. Uh, the good news is the bids did not come in quite at the cost that was anticipated. It was just a little under a uh, million dollars. It was around $900,000. And uh, the work is going to begin this summer. Therefore, the bonds have not been let yet. So the $150,000 from last year and the $150,000 from this year, if I'm correct, Floyd, can come off the top. So the bond, instead of being a bond for a million dollars, will be a bond for $300,000 less than a million, 700 or less, whatever the amount of money that um, the treasurer and the school department agree is the appropriate amount to bond. So it will be somewhat less than we thought for a whole lot of reasons, which is good. So the recommendation of the Capital Budget Committee is to spend the money in the following way. Under public safety equipment, we recommend digital portable radios for the police department. This is the second phase of a two-year program to upgrade. Uh, all of their radios, and they actually managed to get a grant which funded about a third of the total. Uh, and so that was funded last year also. So this $38,000 is somewhat less than he had expected because they were able to get more radios last year than they had anticipated. The second item is the uh, generator for the antenna site. You may all recall uh, when the McLean development, when the cemetery was done, the old antenna had to be moved. And that antenna had a generator attached, and, and attached to this antenna are all the major communication radios for the town. Mm -hmm. And that generator is not sufficient <coughs> to serve what is currently on the antenna. So there needs to be a new generator purchased for the antenna site, then that generator, we are exploring whether or not that can be reused somewhere else in town. It, it is a good generator. It just doesn't have the horsepower that is needed. 
So that's the issue with that. And then the third item is the fire department upgrade uh, phase two, and they were not successful in getting the grant. So theirs is completely what they thought it would be. So that's the public safety equipment. Under computer equipment, I'm at a loss, but I'm glad that John Bow is here because he can help me. Um, a couple of the things I know what it is. Uh, we are recommending uh, adding and updating the infrastructure only to the foreign language lab at the high school. And uh, it's not a whole lot of money, and it will then enable the school department to solicit contributions from others or the Belmont Ed Foundation, Foundation. to... Uh, by the equipment and things that attach to all of this infrastructure. So it seemed like a, a very good idea. Uh, and we were assured by the school department that there would not be further requests in, in future years for the foreign language lab, that they would, they would do that privately, but they were asking for infrastructure. Data integration and recovery phase two, which is the town end. Uh, phase one was last year and was the school department side. and. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what this is. John, I, I mix up all my computers. <coughs> Let's say um, data management and storage system. Uh, the first half was at the high school, and it will be, uh, it'll be uh, paired with the town side, so it will be, one would back up the other. So the major storage along with a backup to the other site, so you don't have to have other off-site storage. That's essentially it. It's any company of any size that does something like that. And it's expandable, so when you need more, you just add another little, relatively inexpensive piece, not replace the whole thing in the future. Thank you. And then the other piece of the computer, the, the, uh, the IT stuff, is the second piece of the virtualized back-end service. Uh, and this is the town phase, and there was a phase for the school last year, and with the town phase, now the whole thing can work. But I'm not exactly sure what... This, this is, from my understanding, is um, basically replacing, say, 20 servers with maybe eight pieces of hardware uh, that sort of pretend that they're multiple machines. That's what virtualization is. So it would decrease our hardware and electricity and heating and cooling costs. So that's what those items are. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Lee McCann will be at town meeting and he will answer any questions that are, that come up, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, under departmental equipment, uh, there has been a request for backup generators for both the library and the Homer building. Uh, the library request that is being funded is a request for the server room or the head end room for the computer equipment that is that runs the town's system that is at the library. The head end is at the library. There is a battery backup that was supposed to last for two hours and actually this year there was a failure and it didn't last for two hours. So the need is there. There is exploration being done right now as to whether an antenna site generator can be used for this, but there will be some, some work needed to bring the, the, I believe it's gas powered, so it's, there, there's going to have to be some work done to, to bring some gas in and things like that. Um, and if that generator doesn't do the job, this will take care of that too. So that's that particular request. It actually is the second year of the same request, and um, it was felt last year that it probably wasn't needed, and then this year, unfortunately, there was something happened and there was, we were shown there was a need. So um, we were persuaded that we needed to do this. The other part of this is the same type of thing at the Homer building where the, the main computer equipment is and the main telephone <coughs> center is. And you all heard the explanation at a Saturday morning meeting of a major power failure that occurred and the good news is it occurred on a Sunday. And so it did not cause the disruption that it would have caused had it been on a weekday. Uh, what it did let us know, though, is that there were a couple of faults, defects, or, or failures in the system. Uh, and it took an entire day to get the system up and running again. And one of the problems was that at the time, while 911 worked all the time, that was not a problem. 
and the fire department could do their job, they could not communicate with via telephone with any of the other town entities. Now, there weren't no town entities functioning because it was a Sunday afternoon, but there was an awareness of this. There also was an exercise that was happening uh, at the state at the time, and because the fire department did not have a live landline, they could not participate in this exercise. So it proved to be a really big problem. So there is going to be a generator put at the Homer building, which will take care of this need. But they didn't need location of that as well. They did not. You have another change. But yeah. that, we decided, was really not our problem. We would fund the generator, and they could decide where it's going to go. OK, the cemetery, um, they have a, a riding lawnmower. Uh, first of all, the one that they have is at its end. And the second part of this is that this particular lawnmower will, will be able to cut the grass at the new cemetery with whatever the width is or the kinds of things that one needs for the kind of um, system that we have set up that we have for grave sites at the new cemetery. So we always knew this was coming, and fortunately now we have the new. Uh, there are two dump trucks that DPW has requested replacing. These are normal replacement of vehicles, and the vehicles that are being replaced are then getting handed down, and then the very lowest vehicle will be the functional will be the one that goes out the door. Uh, the fire department, there is a uh, utility truck that actually takes uh, some emergency equipment around when there is a need for it. And the cost of this utility truck is actually in excess of $40,000. However, one of the dump trucks, the highway, highway department dump truck number nine, uh, will serve the purpose with some refurbishing. So the Capital Budget Committee thought that it made more sense to spend less than $10,000 and refurbish this than spend $40,000 and buy the fire department the utility truck that they need and has been requested for two years. So this is one of those examples of how we're trying to reuse equipment uh, for a different purpose, but it really, one really has to do something to make this work. And then the shift commander's vehicle is the $44,000 vehicle. Uh, this vehicle actually is a year behind its normal replacement cycle, and it is the vehicle that acts as the emergency command center when it goes to a site uh, such as the oil spill uh, at Clay Pit this winter uh, or any other such thing where they need to have mobile uh, command center on site for a while. What is that? The they, shift commander vehicle. What kind it's of called, are they buying? Are they buying another one of these four day expedition giants? I believe so. Do you remember exactly, Tom? I believe it was an expedition type vehicle. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just a suggestion, on, on especially as it relates to vehicles, <laughs> that um, I think we should anticipate uh, detailed questions about each of these. A town meeting and, and not certain what I guess I don't know what the plan would be to rather than yourself uh, the department heads explain oh I have or, sent an email <laughs> yes and I've already <laughs> because I, I, I <laughs> envision and frankly I think to expand to the rest of these items which I think are sorely needed that um, no. someone available or assigned to be able to explain them there will all be manner so we can move forward rather than I think it's right. 1996 vehicle I think it has a hundred you know, I think that doesn't, frankly, that's just not going to fly a town meeting, never has. Right. It just prolongs a discussion on a, you know, $40,000, $44,000 vehicle when we have more important things to debate. Right. Yeah, I think there needs to be some justification as to why they're picking the vehicles they are. I mean, I, I mean you know, the exhibition, the expedition is a fairly <coughs> large. Why they're picking vehicles. the new vehicle? Yeah. Well, I mean, why? You know, the command center is. The fire chief has been asked to explain that. He he did explain it. We used to get by, to get by with Ford Fairlands, and now we've got these monsters. I know we, we carry more equipment. And, right. You know, he shows me the inside of his car, and it's fairly. <coughs> you know, it, it just it, the message it sends is one that I'm very comfortable. 
Right. I, I know both Tom and I have communicated today that people who are getting vehicles need to be prepared to justify the two town meeting. Well, I, I do wonder, I mean, is there, an, <coughs> it depends on use, of course, and some use is harder than others, like yes. police vehicles and maybe fire vehicles, but um, is there an established policy in terms of when vehicles are replaced? The fire department actually does have a practice, it's not a policy, but it's a practice of replacing vehicles, and it's, I believe, every four years. Um, no, three years is what they prefer for the heavy-duty use vehicles. When a vehicle finishes that particular three-year use, the vehicle is not eliminated. The vehicle then transfers to a different use, and then to a different use and to a different use. The vehicle that would be eliminated in this string this year would be a 1998 vehicle that um, has a lot of maintenance problems and is, is really not, not functioning. However, the next vehicle up will, will filter down to that. Um, I just want to clarify for anyone who may be watching at home who's not familiar with how this works. When you say a three-year cycle, that doesn't mean every vehicle gets replaced every three years. That just means that every three years, a vehicle gets replaced. Um, in this particular the case, case, the no. shift commander's vehicle gets replaced every right, three years. Right, but for example, fire, fire engines don't get replaced every three years. No, their cycle is longer. It's about six years. And the ambulance, <clears throat> I believe, is five years. I guess there is you know, a cycle. Is what I was see, trying to say is there is one. Yes. We can see the debate that's occurring here, and uh, I guess in, in right. deference to the chairman of the board of selectmen, his point is well. I mean, is there a policy? What size vehicle should they get? I mean, are we getting the best deal? I mean, uh, is, uh, are we taking the right approach? And this may be beyond the capital budget committee's responsibility. That I may also chair, uh, but maybe a more robust established policy in terms of. When are vehicles replaced? What's the mileage? I mean, just cost benefit. If you're doing more maintenance right. than after two years because the thing is just broken down, then you need to replace it. And so some fact, something involved there. Because vehicles, it's, in, it's one or two who care of it, it. Overall, for the entire town, probably it's a significant cost. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. No. Okay. The Capital Budget Committee does go through this exercise every year, and we actually have asked the town administrator to establish a vehicle reuse policy for the town overall, and that's going to be done um, before next year's budget is done. Uh, the fire department is, and, and the DPW are two departments that actually have had a practice in place for a number of years. However, they still have to go through the, what is the mileage, please show us the maintenance records. We actually get the maintenance records and see what, what the maintenance is, what the mileage is. There are times, a year ago there was a vehicle for the fire department that it just turned out was a lemon. It was newer than others and <coughs> it was always in the shop. And so it was replaced and it was eliminated because it just wasn't worth keeping. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the vehicles are handed down if they can be, and we try to get the maximum use out of the vehicles by doing it that way. We do let things slide sometimes. If this, there were two shift commander vehicles requested this year. Only one was recommended for funding. What do we have? I believe two, but we might have three. We have the Is the chief have, car I, considered I don't know. a shift commander vehicle? Yeah, who's going to who's gonna specifically get have, this card? I mean, do we? Does the chief always get the new car, and then we roll down one, or does the you know the, the third the guy? Chief, I believe the chief got the new one last I year. Believe. Chief has one. Uh, the deputy chief has one. So the, the chief ship, keeps his for three years before he gets a new one. At a minimum. Mm -hmm. Ship the deputy chief, shift commander. There may be a fourth, but there's at least three. The other thing, for some reason, we stopped doing it. I'm not sure why. At least I think we stopped doing it. I haven't noticed it. But we stopped marking the, the, uh, the fire cars. They don't sell Belmont Fire in the doors anymore. They just, you know, they're really tiny. They actually do know. say it. It's just Well, you've got to find it. You know, I want a nice big letter so that let's park down in front of well, Dunkin' Donuts. Everybody knows who's there. There is a policy. The town has okay. a policy, and the policy is that they have to be lettered. And it's the Board of Selectmen's policy. So you can... <laughs> Would you can review, dictate what you, you want the, that, the letter would you size to be. review that policy? Because I, I get it's one of the things I get a lot of calls on for some reason. To, uh, I, I don't know, but it should be, you know, it, they should be well, well marked and very visible within town as to where those cars are and what they're doing. 
Jim? Whoever is handling this article with respect to the equipment should be ready for questions about how green are these. Yes. Yes. That was more the focus of my email today. Yeah. No, we had that discussion this morning. Okay, good. So I think, I think they're red, aren't they? <laughs> they are. <laughs> oh. Were you here when we bought the yellow one? No. Only lasted a real short time. Nobody liked it. Okay, um, so that's the end of those article, those items. And then under buildings and facilities, uh, the fifth, it's really not the fifth year, it's the fourth year of a five-year replacement. I thought I had corrected that, but I guess I missed it. Um, the fourth year of a five-year replacement program on the uh, translucent panels at the high school. And this yearly replacement program has taken, <coughs> probably will take 10 years by the time we complete it. Uh, there was a long hiatus when there was a need for other things. Uh, the building security program, which you remember we initiated a year ago, uh, we are ending the first phase this year. Uh, there is a need for uh, $50,000 to complete the work at the Homer building and $150,000 to do the work at three of the elementary schools. Uh, the um, Last year, the Warrant Committee and the Capital Budget Committee received an overall scheme for how this was going to be accomplished. When the project was actually, the bids were actually done, it was learned that um, there was more money that needed to be expended uh, at the front end, for sure. So instead of $100,000 for the schools this year, it's one hundred and fifty. dollars Instead of nothing for the Homer building, which was supposed to be part of last year's, that $50,000 is added to this year's. And the Wellington School is not on the list at this time because it is sincerely hoped that a year from now the Wellington School will be ready for construction. However, we have, the Capital Budget Committee has asked the school department to bid the Wellington as an ad alternate so that should there not be progress on the Wellington, that there will be an option to go ahead and fund the security for the Wellington School and do it via a special town meeting next fall. So that, the 150 does not include the Wellington. But if the Wellington project is not going forward in a very timely manner, which we're thinking is by July of 09, <clears throat> then the Wellington School should be having the security put in place too. Um, HVAC work at the police station. Uh, this is mainly for the uh, dispatcher's room. And if any of you were in there at the, the public tours, you saw all of the equipment and all of the wiring and how overheated it gets. And there is a need for that room to have it set, uh, sort of be on a separate system. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, the school building envelope study, uh, we discussed this at Warrant Committee a few weeks ago, and the Capital Budget Committee is recommending three items as the initial start to this. We would love to be able to say we've got $300,000, and that's what we'll put towards building envelope for the whole town every year. However, uh, we didn't even have $300,000 this year to put to that. So we took the uh, first three items on the list and are going to try to, to fund those. Uh, the Burbank front entrance flagstone and the steps, the uh, masonry wall patching, which is basically repointing all of the schools um, in the areas that are most needed, and repointing at the high school. And those are the three areas that are uh, recommended or doing at this time under that program. Under site improvements, this is another item we did discuss at the Warrant Committee three weeks ago. Uh, the, this is the year that the track needs to be resurfaced and restriped. And so that is not because there's anything wrong with the track. It is something that was understood at the time that we purchased that surface. And we feel that if we're spending, if we have spent two and a half million dollars, we should be taking care of these things in a timely manner. So we have recommended doing that. And then the last item is the million fifty-one thousand for the pavement management program if there is not uh, an override, a successful override. Isn't that it? If there is not, 
No, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, wait. Yes. We would be doing it anyway. Right. Yes. yes. Please. Right. Wait. I'm sorry. Please. Wait. Oh. Right. Oh. Wait. No. This is this is a major issue. You and are I think absolutely we need right. Absolute right. clarity on this, Pat, because what you've just You're said right. is a right. million right. so, right. dollars every single year from capital budget will be spent on pavement management, whether or not the override. And the override passes. Three and a half million dollars will be spent every year on pavement management, you which was it. the recommendation right. of the pavement I'm sorry. Say it, totally yeah. I'll say, say it one other way: if the override for two and a half million dollars passes, this one million dollars that we have currently been using as <laughs> override will not be diverted to other uses. It will right. never be diverted to other uses. To make sure it will right. always be used for pavement management. Thank you. I am sorry. Okay. That, um, she has not forgiven me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's not be fun. It will be a long time to get out of that dark house, let me tell you. Yeah. Wait, that's okay, are there any questions on the capital budget as far as we've gone? We'll deal with the roads override in a second. Roy. Does this, what is building security for an elementary school? Is it a metal detector? Or <clears throat> what is it? I believe it is not a metal detector, and um, it is something I am uncomfortable discussing in open session. Um, because it has to do with the security of buildings. Um, but if you really want to know, either you can talk to John after the meeting or we can go into executive session and discuss it. All right, well, we'll move on for now. Okay, it, it is something that is, that is well, needed in all of our buildings. This. Right now, all of our buildings have a key. That's how we function. So, we're upgrading coming into the 20th century, if not the 21st. Um, are there any other questions? On Move that we recommend uh, the <coughs> appropriations in the motion Mrs. Bruce has just discussed. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, the second motion is the motion in case the override passes in the likelihood that the override will pass and we don't want to have to come back to a special town meeting to have to appropriate the money that will have just been approved by the voters and that is that the town will appropriate two and a half million dollars from the road stabilization fund which is where that money would be parked to be used for pavement management are there any questions on that this money will be in addition to the $1 million, and that will be in perpetuity. No. If, if no. This, no. Uh, no. If, no. I'm sorry. No, if, that's no. not right. That's not correct. No. All right. It, this is subject to, essentially it's subject to appropriation, appropriation every, every, year. Year. every year. Every year. And if the selectmen or town meeting cut the appropriation, that's the maximum thereafter. Correct. So it act, in effect, the selectmen and town meeting can stop this anytime they want to. But not the other million dollars. No, that's That correct. million dollars will always be used. Can I just make one clarifying sure. point to, 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 to Jim's point? Uh, we can stop it any time we want, and as Jim said, if we do stop it, uh, the amount that we cut back to is the amount that... Um, that's the limit. That's the limit. That becomes right. the limit of what you can raise. Right. Unless it if, goes back to the and, up vote. Unless it gets voted back in yep. again. And if the money is not appropriated for votes, it cannot be raised in the tax levy. Correct. That's right. Okay. So there's no there's no opportunity for the town, given the way we're, this is being structured, to say, okay, this year we're not going to appropriate it for roads. We're going to use it for something else. We, we cannot Correct. do that. That money can only go into the road stabilization fund. And if we don't put it in the road stabilization, we cannot collect we the taxes. We can't tax collect the taxes. Okay. You had your hand up. Sorry. I did. And if this motion fails, then what? Can we can't we raise it. the money and, and we can't spend it. Well, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. Tom, we can't spend it. If the motion fails and the override is yes. approved, yes. you'll go back to another special town meeting. Okay. Bring back, yep, back the you. money. Okay. But given that this is contingent on passage of right. the override, right. it doesn't make any sense for it to not pass. Right? Yes. But I'm sure. I, I think 
Ralph makes a good point here. Um, I think some people might misconstrue what this, we have to really be careful about how we explain this because they may see this as a vote on the override. <coughs> and I, you follow, I think people might get up and vote against it because they intend to vote, hopefully not, against the override in June. And so I think we need to make it clear that this is not a, a vote for or against, well, I suppose you, they can see it as a way to undercut what, what, we're attempt, what we're attempting to do, but this is not a vote for or against the override. It's a vote to appropriate if the override passes, then you, everyone will have an opportunity within this community to vote for that in June. Because I think if, if they, I can envision this happening. People will get up and vote against it that don't want to support the override, and that's not the intent of this motion. Okay, so I think what you're suggesting then is is that after this motion is made and when when I'm up there doing the, the capital budget that I explain that the a vote on yes. this is not a yes. referendum on yes. the yes, sure. I think we on the referendum. It, absolutely it is clear. Right. you are not supporting or opposing the override itself. All you are doing is saying if the override passes, here is how we will spend the money. And that's what we did with the senior center. So I think we can probably get that explained. Okay, then just the final thought then would be it's really for administrative convenience because we'd have to come back to it anyway mm -hmm. in October. Mm -hmm. Right. If you override that. Right. Yeah. I think so. And we will already have discussed this in Article 25 when this motion comes. The stabilization right. fund itself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Establishing that. Right. Yes. Right. Correct. Right. What happens if that fails? Yes. Um, if 25 <coughs> were to fail, then this motion could be, somebody could just m move to dismiss it because it would serve no purpose. You can't appropriate the money from the fund if the fund doesn't exist. But we would need to have a town meeting for the fund before we set the tax rate, right? Because we wouldn't have a place to move the money into it. That sounds right. Yeah, we'd have to have uh, this come back for the town meeting, Article 25. Even before we this. set the tax rate, yeah. as opposed to whatever we wanted to just take it out of the fund. Right. Okay. Because this is appropriating the money from the fund, the other article mm -hmm. is putting the money into, establishing the yeah. fund itself, <clears throat> yeah. so that there's a place to put the money into. Okay. Well, something that seems simple, it's very complicated. Yeah, is there any further discussion on this? Some, some Somebody, <coughs> probably shouldn't be me, should be available to explain, unlike a normal override, this one can be stopped by reducing, by not appropriating the money. By not appropriating the money. There should probably be an explanation of what a specialist stabilization fund is. Mm -hmm. I agree, because it is different. We talked about who was going to do that. Either Tom or I or some one of us. I don't have my notes in front of me. We'll do it Friday, so we'll go over it. Some one of us will do that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's. I have to. Okay. A good suggestion. I'm just going to move task for a second. What did you have put up? Mark, did you have a question? Well, I'm just trying to understand Jim's point because I, I why, why would you? I mean, it just. I guess explaining the stabilization fund and how that operates makes sense to me. Why would you say that this could always be stopped in the future if the selectmen decide not to appropriate? So that since we're, most people think of an override as something once it's done, you can never get rid of it. And I think it's oh, it's built into the tax base forever. That's the way most people see it. This is technically not an override, it's a capital outlay. Uh, and I think it would be wise to say this, we do have a check on this. I, 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 I agree. And, and in fact, in, the, in my notes, we, we said that I would address that at town meeting so, and, and explain that. Just that the fact is that if, if, if at some point uh, the state came along and said, here's a bunch of money to fix your roads, you, you don't need it anymore, Belmont, uh, if, if that were to ever happen, then we could all we could say, fine, thank you, we'll use your money. And we'll, we'll yeah. Mark? I understand your point. I just don't want to lay something out there, you know, false hope, if you will, that we're going to stop this at some point. Well, I mean, it's a question that's come up a lot. It has the warrant committee, when we yeah. voted for this, is that 
there's going to be $2.453 million a year for right. the next 20 years that needs to be appropriated to fix our roads. End right. of story. It's going to be appropriate. And I don't envision the state coming a bunch, through with a bunch of money. No, but it's a question that comes up. Um, I think the, and the only other way I could see this not being appropriate is that we didn't have the capacity to, to use the fund. But why wouldn't you appropriate? We'd find the capacity to, to be able to use it. Well, you can roll it over. You don't have to use it oh, in, the year in, which you, in, the, in the year in which you raise right. it. Right. So the, the, I don't envision a scenario whereby you would not appropriate this. If, if either the state came through with a lot of money for mm -hmm. roads, which is highly unlikely, or in a case where there was a huge downturn in the economy and the Board of Selectmen, for whatever reason, felt that this was just a huge burden on the taxpayer, they might decide to decrease the amount. I, I don't think they ever will. But the point is, they could, whereas the override we voted in 2001, they can't without the voters underwriting it. Jeff? Um, not to prolong this any further, but it's important to understand when Mr. Heim talks about stopping the override in successive years, that not spending the money doesn't do that. No. It's Correct. the selectman's decision it's not, not to put the money into the fund no, that does that. No, no, you're, you're right, Town you're meeting right. can you're choose not, not to spend it Correct. any year they want to, and that doesn't keep it from going yeah. carrying forward. Does, Go ahead. Does town meeting have any say in the decision about not raising the money, or is that to the selectman exclusively? It doesn't seem to be, except when the money's then going to move out of the fund. It, to be used, but setting the tax rate is really the, the prerogative yeah. of the Board of Selectmen, and that's where it comes up, is, is what are we right. setting the tax rate at? <coughs> are we setting the tax rate with this or not? Yeah, that makes sense. I've thought about this problem a little. I tend to think town meeting does have control, because it, it takes the annual, it, if the appropriation isn't made, money has to be appropriated. No. Yes, but it stays in funds. But it, it doesn't have to be appropriated. It can be taxed and sit in the stabilization so fund and earn yes. interest. Yeah. Okay. That's the whole point That's of the, the laws. They're not saying okay. that you... I'm, I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. The law doesn't say you have to spend that three and a half million no. dollars every single year. In our particular case, it would be hard to think of how we would not be spending three and a half million dollars <laughs> every year because we probably could spend five and, and, <clears throat> and still not get very far. But we could spend... The, ta the taxpayer could be putting the money in the fund, the selectment, you know, not appropriate. If that's the wrong word, what is it? Tax it, I guess, the tax it. Mark, um, yeah. Just to, I mean, I, I read the IGR, you know, from yes. DOR, and um, it says legislative body, so uh, I don't know what our bylaws define as a legislative body for appropriation purposes. Town meeting. Oh, town meeting, town meeting appropriate. And, and, but, but when it gives the example of whether it's purpose of the fund changes and or the amount appropriated in any subsequent year if there's a reduction, it's the legislative body. Yeah. So I think you're suggesting it's the Board of Selectmen, and I think I may agree with Jim that it's it's town meeting. But based on what I'm reading here, maybe I'm misreading this. Would the selectmen, when the selectmen make the decision on setting the tax rate, they get to make the decision as to whether or not they're going to raise that 2.5% and put it into the stabilization fund. They can decide not to tax that 2.5%, and if they make the decision not to tax the 2.5% and not put it in the stabilization fund, then that kicks off the new limit to whatever number it says the legislative body, body Angelo. Yes. And you're not the legislative body. It's an appropriate. It's legislative body, appropriates. It's appropriate. Once it's in the stabilization fund, the selectmen don't decide whether it gets spent or not. Out of, the, out of the stabilization fund, the, legislation, the legislative body decides, take that money and now spend it. Barbara? I, I believe there, the IDR referred to two different kinds of stabilization funds. Yeah. The first kind is the kind that you're talking about, Mark, and you're right, but that is the standard stabilization fund where the the uh, town meeting can say what it's going to be voted for, but this is a special purpose that's this being is voted for paragraph. for a special, a special purpose. Special, yes, yeah, so that's the second one down. The, under summary, the second paragraph. Okay. It's the page you were just reading from, but it's the next paragraph. And it says two thirds of the selectmen must vote to appropriate, is in quotes, the additional capacity. 
So that's what they're calling it, and that's the, that's what they're saying, the capacity. Okay. And then if, quotes appropriated, the assessors must raise it. <coughs> okay, so it's paragraph two. So it's paragraph two that drives Fine. this one. Sorry paragraph one drives other kinds of stabilization funds, which we, we actually have another stabilization fund, which is just the general stabilization fund. This is the amendment fund. that took place in um, July 31st, 03. I think so. Yeah. This is a very important distinction because what we've been saying about this is this is a lockbox fund. If it goes in here, it will be spent on roads. And, uh, Any changes by referendum it's suggesting here? It, That's correct. correct. That would make sense. And if it does not go in here, it cannot be appropriate. It cannot be taken else. from the taxpayer. It wasn't clear to me that there's two types here. Yeah. Actually, we spent a long time with council on this a couple of years ago, which is, I think, how come we know there are two, but just reading it, it doesn't really get very clear. Okay, any other questions on this particular article? Uh, there was a motion and a second, so all in favor? Aye. Um, any more opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay. And Article 11, which is the article on... Uh, the Water Enterprise Fund and the Sewer Enterprise Fund, and these are the, quotes normal articles on the Water Enterprise Fund and the Sewer Enterprise Fund. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on those? Madam yes, Chair, Jim. just a quick clarification. There is a typo in the uh, motions. Um, the very first amount listed under Article 11 uh, for the water section should be 4964 uh, 193 instead of 163. I don't know where we got a 530 bucks. Mm. <laughs> we could take a collection of one. Yeah. Two. Okay. Two bucks All in favor of this one? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> Anyone abstaining? Okay. Patrick, yes. Question. Um, who would be uh, presenting? I mean, beyond the motion. Um, I know it's your team, but there's not likely to be questions. Ralph, would you say anything about this? Or would I can. I can I, I'm more knowledgeable of the sewer part uh, as is Glenn, but uh, Peter knows the water. Should I speak? Tom, this, should yeah. Pete? this is the normal water and sewer article. I understand. Yes. Yeah. But if there are questions on the budget, if there's questions, this uh, is what I know the sewer and, and, and I believe that uh, Peter. I know Peter, Peter can them. Water, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that would that would definitely be Peter. Okay. That takes care of the warrant. Um, now we can turn to minutes. Yes. I'm sorry, Ron. Uh, last week we, <laughs> we uh, passed a motion on Article 20. Yes. Um, suggesting and recommending to the selectmen that they dismiss. Uh, this article. Uh, however this is going to work out, it's definitely going to be discussed at, at town meeting. And I didn't know much about the article, so I abstained. I would appreciate it if we could discuss this uh, motion again, which would require somebody who voted in the affirmative to make a motion to reconsider, but I'd like to get, get a couple of comments out on the, on the table about it. I'd make a motion to reconsider. Okay. Okay. I want to go back to this just so I can make sure exactly what we're doing here. Uh, not so much from the standpoint of the merits of the objections of the neighbors, but more from the standpoint of the process. Uh, basically, as I understand it, no developer at this point can present a development that would include both Horn Road and the parking lot to the planning board because no developer, absent this motion, would have control of the property. Um, therefore, uh, by would have a potential control of the property. No, we'd have control. Well, I, I I'm just presenting what I heard from the planning board, which was right. they, they need control uh, in some fashion of the, uh, of the property. Uh, therefore, uh, if the motion is dismissed, uh, the developer cannot proceed with this, and basically, this particular development can never get and never be considered by uh, the planning board. 
from a procedural standpoint. It's not true. That's not true. Okay. But well, that's well, that's what I was. Right. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's what I was. That's so well, that's what I was hearing from the planning board. Uh, so that's why I wanted to bring it up again tonight because. What, what that would essentially do is mean that this development would essentially be stopped by town meeting not without any ability of the planning board to actually carry out its functions with respect to the Cushing Square Overlay District. Well, so, go ahead, the, Mike. Point, the point is that town meeting, or, well, let's speak yeah. for the warrant, yeah. I'll speak for myself, yeah. saying that we need to carry the discussions further and flesh out what the conditions or parameters are which would guide the select meeting if town meeting were to approve this. It's, that's, that's not at all unprecedented. It's appropriate. It's the right thing to do. And then we proceed. And if that's the case, and there's broad agreement on that, town meeting signs off on that, let's say in October, that was I had, and then a specific proposal gets presented. I mean, this is all a little disingenuous because there is a developer who's showing plans. Yeah. I mean, so we got it. We can't be right. too cute here. But I mean, just if I may, can, to follow can, up. Can, and can we? Okay. A point of order, just, point of order, Madam Chair. We we need to take a vote on to reconsider. Mm -hmm. We well, actually do. no. We oh, absolutely do. You're yeah, right. Mike right. moved reconsideration. Okay. Nobody seconded. Thank and you. We didn't take a vote Thank on you. reconsideration. So, sorry we just about jumped that. into the discussion. We, we need to, for so the you record, are right we need to take a that. vote. Okay. <clears throat> I second the vote to reconsider. I can't. I can. can I second it even though Anyone I Anyone can second it. it. I think yeah. you can second it. I second it. Okay. Is there any discussion on the vote to reconsider? The motion to reconsider? No. Uh, yes, Jim, did you? No, I, I, I think you were voting on the motion. Okay. Fine. Mike. I just say, I feel very, as you See, once again, I feel very strongly yeah. about this issue, but it was as a courtesy to yeah, Ralph. I appreciate it. It's not because I have any second thoughts about the wisdom of our decision. Right. I, I just want to be clear. I, I'm a little uncomfortable doing it just because nobody understood that was going to be happening at this meeting, so well, maybe I'm there are warrant committee have. members who... We could vote for... Move, yes, right, move, the, move the vote. Consider. Move the vote. Correct. Okay, all in favor of reconsidering? Opposed? Okay. So there's three opposed. Three okay. opposed. Oh. All right. Now, now we're having discussion, which we'd already okay. started. Okay. Now, yeah, I, I, Mike was going to go ahead to explain that, and I was going to ask, I guess, what.